director of the Body Image Counseling Center is here with some suggestions this morning. Good morning to you. You know, it's interesting because there's the anxiety I think that children experience and also the anxiety that parents have as a result of the anxiety that their children are going through. So let's talk about ways that we can kind of calm them down a little bit. And you've got some great suggestions. Listen without solving the problem. I make this mistake all the time. So do I, even though I'm a therapist. We're women. We want to solve the problem, Men right? want to solve problems, right. too. It's We want to save our kids, rescue them, and help them. But the truth is we have to remember our kids are good problem solvers, and they need to learn how to do it. So the best way is to just listen, to let them talk about the things. Even just listening to them talking is solving the problem, letting them get it out, their feelings, so they have a safe place to share those fears with you. You can't even just throw in one suggestion. Yes, you can just throw in one suggestion, but if you get an eye roll, you have to stop immediately. And that's the problem. That's exactly what I get. And it's usually, <laughs> Mom, it's been so long since you've even been in junior high so you, or middle school, so you don't know anything about it. Well, I have a tip about that, too. <laughs> right? That you, well, yeah, you, share, you can share your stories with them about, you know, things that bothered you or, you know, about how a group of girls stopped talking to you for two months and it was awful. I mean, those problems do not... It doesn't matter about when it was. They still happen. And Sadly, it just, yes, regardless of your age or isn't that the truth. All right, so yeah. stability and routine. Why is that so important to start even before school starts? Well, because if, I don't know, I have teenagers and they've been sleeping till, you know, <laughs> I don't even want to say how long they've been sleeping all summer, but it, they haven't been getting up at school time. So you definitely want to, I think a lot of kids stay up late and have fun. So you want to ease the time back a little bit so it doesn't shock them so much getting up for the bus or, you know, you don't have to do it all in one night, but ease back a half hour every night or so. Um, and you also want to have dinner maybe together as a family a few nights and, and um, do some things together, have them do their bedtime routine so it doesn't just happen the night before. Regardless, and, and ignore the complaints that you will get from your children because I also do that which is it's the last two nights of summer can I stay up late <laughs> right so you want to do a little of that you don't right. want to be a drill sergeant <laughs> right. but maybe you can pick a couple of routines that you can start off with setting reachable goals for the school year how is that going to help them also overcome the anxiety of oh I remember this one teacher she gave so much homework right. last year well actually I counsel so many kids and kids with eating disorders too and they tend to be perfectionists so what I mean is don't don't set goals that are too high for our kids and I don't mean don't expect them to succeed it's just that they're already carrying so much stress about needing to get A's and they already stretch stress each other out comparing test grades and I mean I know all parents know this out there that that happens with their kids so Tell them you have a minimal expectation, you know, but not perfection. They but, already put too much pressure on themselves. But it's important to sit down and, and talk about the school year. What mistakes do you think you made or could mm -hmm. improve upon next year just so that they are successful? So we, right, we talked right. about, you know, the theory of you're not alone. I went through this also, sharing stories that you have. Uh, and then, uh, and this is great, holding on to the summer a little bit because I will say, last night we went up to a restaurant in the neighborhood and played bingo. Yeah. And since we're traveling next week, we're really not going to have a chance to do that during the school year because it just doesn't work with the homework schedule. And maybe that was the wrong thinking on my part because it's it's not that all the fun has to end just because the summer is over. Well, that's what our culture says, but I think we should try to have fun all year round yeah. if we can, even though it's stressful. So that first week, it might be nice to have, let them stay up a little longer and watch cartoons or have a pancake night or go for ice cream or take a walk on the beach. I mean, it's hot enough to go walk on the beach, even though school's starting. I mean, the weather isn't changing too much <laughs> Isn't that the first, truth? from summer. Uh, so it's interesting in, in terms of the anxieties that we f feel with our children. There may be um, moms and dads at home who are sending their child to middle school and you hear all these dreadful stories about middle school. Our first year or two wasn't so bad um, but you know there are things that are different I, you know a lot of it because we can't solve the problems and we know that it's gonna happen sitting alone in the lunchroom for example things like that we kind of have to have faith in our kids that they can get through it so that we feel a little bit better and we're not stressed throughout the workday worrying about what's going on with them in school Right, I agree. I mean, some discomfort, social discomfort is part of learning how to be social. And if you rescue them all the time, they don't learn. Now, that doesn't mean you ignore them. I mean, you still can be a wonderful, warm place to land at home, you know, even though they're struggling there. And they might not let you know it, but they appreciate it. Yeah, and, and start getting into, as you mentioned, sitting down at dinner. Start ad adapting, if you haven't done it before, that routine of sitting down and talking about the day once they start school. Right, and the other thing, too, is that I think we've talked about this before, that sometimes kids don't talk at the dinner table when you're looking right at them. So get them when they're in the car. They're not, when you're fishing with them or w taking a walk, that's when they're more likely to talk.
Yeah, instead of how was your day good? Right, exactly. What Create Nothing. opportunities. What did you learn? Yep. Nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Try to be specific. You know, ask them how was that math test or how, <laughs> what right. was it about it that you liked? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. So, if you are worried about your child and the start of the school year, and you feel that you really just need to talk with someone like Lori, you can call the Body Image Counseling Center. We have the number to call and a link to their website on our website, newsforjacks.com, where you can also find this entire interview post later this morning. Look under the morning show page.